and welcome to the Fraser Valley BC. This is Hilly Farms and I've uh, been working on this map now for a couple of months, spending a bit of time on it and it's finally got to a point where I can uh, do a little bit of a preliminary show off. It's well away from being finished but um, if I do a little bit of a show off of it now then um, it'll keep me on track to get it finished. Um, we're outside Farm One right here and uh, you can see we're sort of surrounded by mountains which is uh, very uh, reminiscent of this area. Um, the dam is 100% real and I've tried to keep things as real as possible but uh, one thing that is different is the farm buildings are um, all from the game or from mods so uh, you know I haven't tried to copy the farms exactly um, but definitely I've kept their character. Um, this area would be a really interesting place I think for farm sim because while we are in North America obviously I think this style of the style of farming around here is more North American. Uh, we have a lot of rain, the Pacific Northwest is um, renowned for it, probably get more rain than the UK and um, yeah lots of uh, cattle farming around here and silage and things like that and uh, I'm really into maize plus so um, you know that's going to be a focus for this map as well. Anyway let's, um, I'm going to try to keep this short so let's jump over into Google Maps and I'll show you where we are. Okay, so this is North America, strangely enough, and we're over here on the west coast in British Columbia, which is right here, and um, Vancouver is sandwiched right between the US border here and the Rockies, which are sort of all around us. Um, the Fraser Valley sort of starts uh, around Hope here, as far as the farming part of it at least, starts around Hope and uh, really opens up down here around Chilwack. And, um, uh, even down into Washington State around uh, Sumas and um, down towards uh, Bellingham. So that's all the Fraser uh, sort of Fraser Valley area, um, but it's also uh, there's lots of urban encroachment and um, lots of different types of industry and um, all different types of farming from, you know, smaller hobby farms and vineyards through to bigger uh, animal operations. Um the part of the map that I'm focusing on is just one very particular part of the valley, but um, sort of inspired by the whole valley. Uh, for example, there's not much wine, uh, the winery stuff in the part of the map that I'm focusing on, but there is down around this area, um, which is a little bit closer to towns for the tourist market. But um, uh, so this is the area that I'm sort of focusing on. Um, we're just to the south of Harrison Hot Springs, which is a um, sort of resort town. And um, it's a 4K by 4K map. So um, the boundaries are roughly where my mouse is now, 4K is along the south here, uh, the boundary by the river. Um, the east side here includes this forestry mountain area. And then the other two sides are all very, very big mountains. Um, and the dem that I've used, the um, terrain uh, height elevation map that I've used is 100% uh, accurate uh, to around about one meter, um, but only for the bottom and eastern three quarters of the map. The top north western corner around here, I've um, taken a lot of creative liberties, um, mainly because in real life there's not much here farming wise. There's two big prison complexes here and here, and um, uh, some mining stuff. So. Uh, I might have some mining stuff, but um, that's not a priority. So uh, instead, I've taken some creative liberties and created uh, terrain that's very similar to the Pemberton area, which is north of Whistler, which is north of Vancouver. The crops that grow here, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, animal feed, so lots of corn and grass silage. Um, a lot of um, market garden so this is a big market, gar market garden complex and I've got something set up to uh, help with that in the map um, there's a lot of root crop vegetables as well and um, there's also just a lot of farms you'll notice here and I'll go through this on the map as uh, on the actual game map as well but uh, I've counted out all the farms and there's at least 20 uh, that I can tell that are obvious several of them are really really big so I'm gonna have to do some decision making on which ones are included in the game map uh, and not um, but the area we're starting on is just here and this will be farm one and this will be farm two so uh, also while we're here just have a look at this area um, it's directly across the road from farm one and um, uh, yeah, we'll jump into the map now and have a look at this area a bit more closely. Okay, with that 
Google Maps fresh in your mind. I thought it makes sense to start off in the PDA and this is one thing that I obviously haven't spent any time on yet. Um, but uh, what you're looking at there, you can see where uh, I'm standing there is roughly where the uh, camera was last on Google Maps. Um, immediately uh, in this area is that sort of mountain that you saw and uh, there's another one, another one of those here. Uh, down along the south is the river and the big mountain ranges along the top. Uh, there are around about 100 fields, uh, possibly 130, I haven't counted lately, um, and they're obviously in all different sizes. They look quite small on this PDA, but remember it's a four times map, so uh, farm, uh, fields one and two here are quite decent sizes. They're not, um, they're not medium sized, they're bigger than medium size. But there are lots of different sized fields because this area is renowned for vegetable growth and things like that, so um, you know, it's not um, great big grain fields, for example. Um, we'll do a little bit of a tour of um, Farm 1 first. Uh, a bit of a unique feature of this particular area in real life is that the two farms are pretty much right next door to each other. So I think that would really suit a multiplayer setup where um, you know you can see a neighbour working all the time. I've also uh, added some equipment uh, just for the sake of a tour. Um, I haven't this probably won't be what we start off in the game, but I am thinking of doing it a little bit differently. For example, including a forage harvester instead of a real harvester, and um, instead of a combine harvester, I should say. <laughs> and a, uh, this is the weeder that also plants grass seed, so that could be something to include instead of, um, uh, along with a planter, um, instead of a seeder. Um, but anyway, that's sort of a little way down the track, working out what equipment we're gonna use. Um, I think it'll be a massive Ferguson farm though. Uh, as far as the mods I've used for building, because I have no blender skills and no interest in building my own actual buildings, um, I haven't tried to copy the farms that are here in real life, but I have copied their spirit quite a lot. Um, I'll be using mods extensively. Uh, this is, for example, from, I believe it's the Dutch modding group, uh, one of their sheds, it's in a shed pack. Um, and the main cattle barn here is also from the Dutch mining group. It's the cow shed three plus three, I think it's called. Um, so there'll be a lot of mods built into the map. Sorry, not built into the map as um, dependables, uh, dependencies. So uh, they'll automatically download when the map downloads. Um, yeah, I'm just randomly talking and walking around. We've got the slurry pit here and a manure pit there and um, a bit of space for more storage space for build buildings. This is a bit of a custom cow yard that I've made using um, stuff from the US map and we've put the loading shed for that, uh, the loading chute for that here and the animal loading trigger near the loading chute there. Um, which I think having these side yards just builds the main dairy here and makes it look a little bit less like a mod to be honest. That's uh, the intention. Um, I don't know if you remember from looking at the Google Maps but this farm has multiple silage pits so I've done that as well. Uh, they're not in exactly the same location but uh, uh, again like I said before I'm hoping that this is a good map to play Maze Plus on so having extra silage bunkers will certainly be handy for someone and we've got a bit of bulk storage here too. So that's farm one. It includes the bulk storage the shed there with a forage, har forage harvester in it and a dairy farm, a dairy barn, I mean a side yard barn and this storage area. So that's a decent sized uh, farm, not massive, but um, if you filled that up with cars it would certainly keep you busy in Maze Plus from what I've heard. Um, and this is field one directly adjacent, which I've got in grass right now, so we can see a little bit of the view that, that way, which is towards the dike or the, the levee, and obviously the other side of that is the river. And I haven't finished the map boundaries yet, that's why that mountain finishes abruptly. <laughs> so that's uh, farm one. Farm two, so that's farm one in that direction. And farm two starts directly adjacent to it. In real life, there is a little bit of a gap between, there's actually a house in between them in real life. Um, but I think that probably what happened here is that there was maybe a father who had a couple of sons and they just expanded and expanded and sort of grew next door to each other or something. Um, so this is farm two. I've come in the back way, uh, the sort of sneaky way around the back from the neighbours. But um, this would be the front way. That's farm one there. That's the farmhouse. 
and it's very similar in function. It's a different looking cow barn, but uh, a dairy barn, but um, the same size, I believe. There's a maintenance trigger there and a dairy trigger there. Sorry, diesel trigger <laughs> there. And a great big shed for either bale storage or machine storage. And I've included another custom side yard around this dairy barn as well to keep it a little bit interesting. It opens up. And I guess you'd be role playing here that um, the cows are getting milked in, in, this, um, in this dairy and then they're getting walked back into their pens at the end of each milking. Just realize that this loading trigger is in the wrong place, but um, that loading trigger should be hanging out in front of this uh, loading chute, which I'll fix at some point. And that's it for farm two. There's this little section out the back as well um, with a silage bunker and some more bulk storage. Got the double uh, double lime storage points there just because uh, precision, precision farming needs a lot of lime. And uh, yeah, as you'll see, this. Uh, slurry and manure there and um, I think while it is very flat around here because we're on a river flat um, having the corn really keeps you not feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere it uh, keeps you nicely closed in so that's farm one and two I think they're quite interesting farms I think they'd work quite well for um, multiplayer and um, yeah so We'll head off and see what's in the neighborhood. I think I remember pointing out on when we were over on Google Maps that I said, check out the space across the road. In real life, there is a cow barn around about here, but um, over in this direction in real life, on Google Maps at least, is just a construction site. I assume that they were building another cattle barn or a newer cattle barn. Um, but uh, I've just decided to leave it empty as an obvious place for people who are working cow farm one there. Um, to expand production into if they wanted to. Um, but uh, one other feature of this map, and um, I'm really, really sticking to it, is literally everything that's placed on the map can be either sold or removed. Um, so if, you know, if you wanted to just sell all of these houses and, or at least, you know, sell the shed and um, plow over some of this space in the back and turn it into field, it could absolutely happen. And you could even get rid of these houses. So flexibility, uh, flexibility is a really key thing that I'm working on as well. If you head up this direction in that road, that'll go across the, the levee or the dike to the river and to a few more fields on the other side of that. And if you keep going on that road, you'll go around between this mountain and that mountain over there. And there's more farming in between the two, but we'll get over there. In here is, oh, something I forgot to set up earlier. I did intend to, if I can learn to drive properly. <laughs> I did intend to set it up properly. I'll just fill it up with Palominos because they're pretty. Um, but this is just the uh, horse farm in real life. There's a horse farm here. And uh, I think I've spent a bit of time making their gardens look pretty because in my experience, horse farms are usually quite, uh, quite pretty and set up nicely. Um, and uh, yeah, on Google Maps in real life, there's a horse field right here. And it looks like there's a bit of a dressage, um, I don't know what you call them, like a arena um, in this space. And it's not quite the same as in real life here, but it's not far off. Um, I've put, just put a bit of oats in this field, just in honor of the horses, but uh, yeah. Okay, so that's um, the horse farm and the first two farms and the space around it. And those are all the farms that I've finished building at the moment. If you remember that, like there are a ton of farms on this map, uh, you know, in this area in real life. In fact, there's another quite large cattle farm right here in real life that I'm decided I'm not going to include. I think it's just, it's not the right space for it for the, you know, from the game's point of view. Um, there's a smaller dairy farm right here that I am going to include, um, but it'll just be a very small one, uh, like a start off farm. And um, yeah, that's the immediate area. Uh, while I'm here though, we might as well check out some of the natural surrounds. Um, we'll come back to this mountain and I'll just shoot across the field. This will give you an idea of some of the field sizes as well. This area is, I'll just pop open the PDA. 
um, field five there is, I'd say, larger than average, but still, um, you know, compared with the rest of the map, um, goes to the horse field there, a uh, horse barn there, pretty much. Yeah, so they're good sized fields. Um, you'd probably need six or nine meter equipment. That's what I've sort of always had in the back of my head, six or nine meters. Um, this the river, this is, the river's um, obviously massive here and it's all sort of tributaries and tributaries of tributaries and there's a lot of sort of moving islands and um, uh, yeah, uh, in when I've, at the moment you can actually walk out here and I've got it all decorated and everything. Um, but I think when I finish the game, it probably makes sense to uh, finish the map. I mean, it probably makes sense to um, make this sort of off the map. I think it make the map a bit smaller, the file size a bit smaller, but um, that's something to learn down the track. So that's the river. It takes up a fair chunk of the map, um, which, uh, you know, being four times is you need things like that. Otherwise it feels big and empty. Uh, we'll run back across here to um, this mountain. There's a lot of glacier activity, I guess, and huge amounts of erosion. The Rockies been on right on the doorstep of the Rockies. Um, so these mountains are a cool little feature. And uh, there's also these canals or drains or whatever you want to call them um, between all the fields. I'm trying to find a place where a nice place to stand and show it off. Whatever, I'll just run across the field here. <laughs> um, yeah, the nice um, bit of atmosphere and this is there in real life. In fact, in real life, it's full of grass and not quite as pretty, but uh, there you go. And um, I do, in real life, a lot of hiking and mountain bike riding, so it's pretty important to me that um, the forest looks kind of real, <laughs> kind of close to what it looks like in real life, and I think I've done as good a job as you can do in farm sim. Um, and if I can find my way up here, and I don't really know where I'm going, but um, another thing I'm doing is trying to keep uh, as many, like, viewpoints um, Yeah, here it is. This is quite, you know, quite realistic in real life. You'd go on a hike up through this area and just see little glimpses of the farm and farming lands through the trees and through sort of rocky outcrops like this as you go for your hike. And it doesn't look super great at the moment there because you can see the map boundary really obviously, but if you could imagine that disappearing off into the horizon a little bit better, um, I think this is sort of capturing roughly what I want. And uh, I don't really want this video to be too long, but um, you know, that's, I'm not going to be helped by running into rocks. <laughs> I'll um, sort of run up to the top of this mountain. Okay, we're pretty much at the top now and you can see that um, there's all these little viewpoints. Uh, I haven't even really tried to set this up yet. It sort of happened naturally the way I did the tree painting, but uh, yeah, I think it captures a little bit of the spirit of of um, this area and uh, yeah you can definitely you, you can guarantee that there'll be some really nice hiking trails around this map when I'm done um, in fact I've got some stuff to show you about that uh, a little bit later on but that's probably enough of the you know what I'm just gonna tab <laughs> that's probably enough of the natural wilderness tour of this area at least um, I'm gonna jump into flight mode and we'll go across and have a look around. Okay, so here we are in midair. Um, this gives you a little bit of a better idea of the scale, size of things. Oh, one place we haven't been to yet. This reminds me. So this area will be, um, these are grapevines, pre-planted grapevines that will come with this field. And um, there's going to be a, just a small house and a few sheds around it here for maybe a contracting operation. And it actually gives me an idea um, for a map start idea. Like, I don't know if you guys know that uh, the Susquehanna River Valley from FS19 had a really, really good intro story to it. It was to do with a 
city person wanting to move away from the city uh, because of COVID and start off a farm. Um, what I was thinking here was um, there was really bad floods in the Fraser Valley in 2021. And um, there is a way of putting fill types on the, on the ground, um, similar to the way they do it with lime in lime mines. Um, I was thinking of putting dirt on the ground here uh, all around this farm for, um, uh, you know, for potentially for players to role play cleaning up after the flood and starting again. Um, got a few more ideas with that, but um, I might just test out whether it's actually any good to pick up dirt and whether that looks good. And, and more to the point, if I can make that optional, uh, it'd be cool to make that optional, um, uh, an optional way to start the game that you don't have to do if you don't want to. Um, I don't know if that made sense, but you can also see here the, the levee, the dike that will sort of wrap right around the map um, a little bit. Um, let's go this way. These mountains are a feature, like I said, they're just like that in real life. And just the way the map's been laid out, there is this little corner around here that's hidden by this mountain, um, which would be a cool little place for an antisocial farmer to hang out that wants to hide around the corner. That's the um, corner of the map there, and I've spent no time putting those boundaries there, so uh, that'll look a little bit better when I've finished. Um, yeah, so that mountain there, just the other side of that mountain there is where our farms are. It gives you a little bit of an idea of how things link up. Off in this direction, about a kilometer or two is the town of Agassi. So um, in this area, there's a little bit more urbanization. So I'll be building the um, production areas here. I probably won't be including too many built-in productions. I'd like to play around with a few custom ones and then leave a bunch of space for people to do their own thing with productions. Um, I want to keep things moving on, but um, a lot of the gaps between the fields here are roads and or those uh, canals or drainage systems. Um, and um, yeah, that's just, everything's been roughed in at the moment uh, based on real life, but it's still just roughed in. Now, everything that you see um, in this direction and in that direction sort of around to that direction is totally real but everything you see in this direction is not real and that's just because I wanted some foothills in the map in real life this is all dead flat so we've included foothills which I think I've already mentioned are based on the area around Pemberton which is uh, north of BC and um, yeah it focuses on forestry with, with some nice mountain meadows and um, some cattle operations uh, uh, that type of farming and that might as well bring you to that might as well bring us to the next step on the tour given that this area is renowned for its uh, forestry in fact the forestry industry in BC is probably second only to real estate at the moment and um, so it would be silly not to have some sort of forestry on it even though I'm not a big forestry person myself um, and there certainly is a lot of forestry in the map boundaries and that'll be up, divided up nicely and purchasable. Uh, the, this, what you see in front of us here though is a little bit different. So there's a field in front of us um, here that's currently full of trees. And this area is uh, set up as a little logging camp, some deco logs there and um, uh, log racks, I guess, some storage equipment. Um, I've, you know, this uh, forest is nicely sort of laid out and it would be a very easy forest to uh, log. Nice, It's generally flat, there's some nice hills in there, but nothing's too steep. Um, so what I've done is added this feature that logging is great for some people, but other people hate it. And uh, animals are great for some people and other people hate it and they love forestry. So um, what I've done is made this in a really optional area. So as it is set up at the moment, it's I think a really good logging area. And, oh, I've forgotten to do something. And you'll probably guess what I'm gonna show you next by what I'm about to do. Uh, you probably already know what I'm gonna do, but um, if anyone's familiar with Alien Jim's work, then that's exactly where I got this idea from. You'll notice that we don't have a forest there anymore. And, um, 
it's actually a really nice area to put some cows on or at least you could take it in this form and get a lot of grass bales off it you could uh, plow it up and put grass seeds in it and turn it into a big grass meadow um, the world is your oyster with this field now um, if you don't like logging those trees are gone and you'll also notice here that the tree I'm just going to get out of flight, flight mode it's annoying me <laughs> Okay, sorry, flight mode was annoying me. You'll also notice here that the logging rack has disappeared and the decoration logs there has also disappeared. So you might be wondering what's going on with that. Um, you'll also notice that the open gate sign has popped up in the top left there. So let's push that and see what happens. Bang, we've got a cattle loading yard that is completely optional. Now we've co completely converted this area into a cattle yard into a cattle area, um, cattle paddock. And you might think, okay, that's so that's not so good because farm sim doesn't do grazing very well. And um, I've sort of taken care of most of the problems with that too. We don't have a loading trigger here, but we do have animals. Let's put some Angus in there. And would you look at that? Now we have a full-on uh, cattle grazing area. Um, the reason this doesn't happen so much in farm sim is uh, it's really, really annoying putting nav meshes onto a three-dimensional surface. <laughs> um, there are, in this situation, there are five or six nav meshes that I've made in different locations. Um, like there's one random one over here and they're all on sort of relatively flat ground, but they do take a little bit of tweaking to make it, make the cows not hover. Uh, but I do intend on um, widening the cow's range a little bit, uh, especially along the road line here. So it looks really cool as you drive around. Um, and I think at the moment the cattle limit is 500. So you could certainly get yourself into trouble with some beef cattle up here if you really wanted to. So this farm, this field at least, this optional grazing and forestry field is finished. Um, but just across the road there, oh, and it goes all the way down here. So there's a few hills. Um, to log yourself around if you are into that um, but then there's this fence that separates um, this area into another uh, there's going to be a second logging and grazing area here that I haven't completed yet um, I wanted to test that one test that one uh, out a little bit first to make sure it worked um, and one last thing um, which it's kind of cool, but it's uh, just another trick of the same type of trick I've already done is the rocks. Just in case someone wanted to plow this field over and they didn't want to plow around rocks. Um, I've also made, if I can get my chainsaw to work. I found it eventually. I think it's just because um, there is actually two trees there and um, anyway you'll notice that there are no rocks here now so that's um that's a cool little trick of this area and very much in sort of in line with the style of map that I want to create is lots of flexibility alrighty let's um trot off in this direction In fact, what we will do now is start flying again. So I just want to have a look around the rest of the map. Um, we've got some nice uh, mountain meadows here. This is a bit of, mount, bit of a mountain valley up here. I'm not sure how I'm going to turn this into viable land, but we'll work out some way of doing it. Um, and this is just a start of a little bit of a mountain biking and hiking and maybe motocross trail network that I'm going to build around the map. Uh, well, at least I'm going to build a trail network around here and I'll have at least one trail that does a loop all the way around the mount boundaries. And I think I'm going to use the collectibles um, just as a treasure hunt around that boundary, not really hide them, but um, just as something extra to do to reward, to reward people if they want to take a, a ride around the map. And um, this is a nice little forestry area. Spent a fair bit of time in here trying to keep it looking as real as possible try to keep things looking as random as possible that's really the trick to this stuff is just trying to randomize everything um, but yeah there's a little mountain mountain uh, lake 
up here. Um, there'll be some waterfalls at some point. I need to teach myself how to do that. And um, this is the optional uh, forestry field that we just cut down. Um, that's where the second optional forestry field will be. This will be a nice natural wilderness area as well with a bit of a waterfall going through it and another little mountain lake up here. So that's a natural area. Uh, this video is already too long so I'm just going to zip back to the farm. Um, you'll remember from the Google Maps tour that uh, there's that big market garden which is actually just over there somewhere. I think I've left a space for it but um, the greenhouses in farm seem they're, they're good they're not too bad but um they're nowhere near as big as what the farming operation is um around here so i've gone into the large in-house green greenhouse and um made a few edits so i'll just show you how they look um this is obviously still a working process a progress uh, do we want Yeah, let's do tomatoes and they're withered, which I knew they would be. And we've got some, let's call these quote unquote tomatoes. If you know anything about BC, you'll know that you know what that joke means. Um, yeah, so this is just going to be a uh, very large um, uh, market garden style um, outdoor greenhouse sort of thing. I'll build two more of these uh, pod things and extend it that way and then rack a bunch of them together and link up their loading nodes somehow. Um, so that's going to be a cool little feature is um, quite a large uh, greenhouse complex setup. And this here, this just looks like normal cows. And given that I've already got cows in, you know, the rest of the field or the rest of the farms, that's not that exciting. But um, what you guys don't know is that this is actually land that doesn't have any owners and if land isn't owned, then you can't sell a placeable that's on it. And if um, there is animals inside a barn, then you can't sell that placeable either. So how we have managed to have this uh, cow barn not owned by anyone, but still have cows in it is the trick. And that was on a map that oh, I've forgotten the name of it, it came out recently, but you see it fairly often where they put, um, the map makers put live deco cows inside the animal trader. And I'm definitely going to do that and I've worked out how to do it as demonstrated here. But um, I'm also going to create some um, deco farms. Uh, being a 4K map and given that there in real life are so many farms in this area, I'm going to create one or two, maybe three or four uh, decoration farms that can't really be used but have decoration animals in them and put them in places where that you drive past fairly often. So. Um, this gap here is actually the low heat highway or it's going to be and um, you'll be driving past this space a fair bit where there is a farm in real life so um, I'll probably put a bunch of deco farms around the place that just really bring life to a map especially if you're playing a four, a four times or 4k map and single player things like that makes a massive difference. Um, this video has gone well over the time I thought it would take and I'm just going to check my notes to make sure that I've covered almost everything. One thing I haven't talked about is uh, the other farms. There'll be definitely a mix of um, different sized farms. I've obviously started off focusing on cows, but uh, for example, over near the grapevines, there's a nice little farm that's going to have just a little chicken run on it and uh, a very small custom pig pen as well um, uh, but that's just one there's also a cool mod in the mod hub uh, at the moment a 5,000 chicken chicken shed um, it looks kind of cool and very similar to the types of big chicken operations that are in this area so I'll probably build a great big chicken farm somewhere as well um, but uh, yeah I guess what I was saying before about there being so many farms on this map uh, it's an opportunity to set up some sort of varied and different types. Um, the other thing I really want to add to the map is blueberries. Uh, blueberries are a really really big crop in this part of the world and um, I've noticed that high bush blueberries which is one way that they're growing um, look very very similar to the way that olives look in this um, 
in this in FS22. So I'm hoping that there's a way of uh, customizing the olive functionality in the game to make that look like look and act like blueberries. Um, that's uh, on one of the, one of the many things on my to-do list. Okay, one other sort of final thing that um, I forgot to show you before when you're at this um, farm was that uh, I've watched a fair bit of Tom Pemberton's videos on YouTube and uh, one thing that he does is do nice video montages of um, in spring and summer when the cows are let out of the barn and they're first you know let loose in their field to graze and uh, that doesn't really happen in farm sims so I sort of was inspired by that to give it a go and work out a way of doing it and uh, what I've done here is create a, a temporary grazing um, field. Uh, if you notice there, I just push the open gate function in the top of the screen and the, these fen this fence and the feed triggers here come and go. Um, this way you can, in spring and summer, you can uh, transport your cows uh, somehow out of the barn and drop them straight into the uh, grazing and um, yeah you've got happy 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 cows and given that it's a grazing you know the idea is that you put them on one piece of land and then when they've eaten those grass that grass you move them along to the next piece of grass um, we've actually got three different grazing pens here that's the first one's there this is the second one we'll get rid of that and we'll come over to this one somewhere here. There it is. I don't know if you noticed, but there's a cow moo. Every time the fence goes up and down, the cow moos in the background. <laughs> and uh, just to show you how that animal dialogue's right there, we'll chuck some Angus in there. And there you go. Obviously, it's a little bit role play, a bit of a role play thing. Um, it looks a bit silly when you've got more than one lot of uh, fences up and obviously you can also lower the fences while the cows are still in there um, but um, it's a cool little gimmick if nothing else and obviously the idea is that you can keep your cows in this part of the field and let them graze while still farming the rest of the field I think I've covered everything now so uh, there you go um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this little tour uh, one of the main reasons I um, did this tour is that if there's anyone out there who's been inspired by this at all to contribute in any way, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, it's a massive effort to put a map like this together and um, yeah, if you've got some ideas, I'd love to hear them, and especially along the production lines. Um, at some point, I'm going to need a BGA and I know a young strapping YouTuber who's put together a BGA that I might like to use um, but anything else as well uh, especially things like putting different crops into the game and uh, all that good stuff anyway this video has been too long already and I think I've covered what I need to if I haven't I'll probably make another video in the future so uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff and thank you for watching